I did a couple of posts in November, December, only small spikes, maybe 1,000, 2,000. But then since March 21st, so it's actually nearly three months I've been posting, we have some much bigger spikes. And yesterday was actually the biggest spike of all. We got to 9,000 impressions in one day. And I'll explain exactly how we did that. Hello and welcome to the next installment of the Content SEO Social Flywheel series that we're running. These are just solo episodes with myself explaining to you how we're building this flywheel for fame, which is the B2B podcast agency. And today we're focusing in on a hot topic right now, which is a LinkedIn organic posting. So it's simply, well, actually, no, I take it back. It isn't necessarily just LinkedIn. It's organic posting to social platforms that your potential customers may be. It's quite a hot topic right now. It's working very well for some people. And over the past six weeks, I've been executing on LinkedIn specifically this exact strategy, posting most days organically from my personal profile. And so in this episode, we're going to run through my metrics, what exactly has been happening, has it been working, like is it actually doing anything for us? We're going to go through the theory of why this works right now. We're going to talk about mindset. We're then going to optimize your profile. We're then going to talk about content creation, how you create this content with minimal time investment. And then we're going to follow that up with the metrics that we're looking for in order to understand if we are being successful. So my metrics, I'm actually looking at the chart right now, and I'll link to a LinkedIn post actually where I share this chart. But I actually started doing this about a year ago. And the little Basically, if you go to LinkedIn, you can see the performance of your posts, essentially. And so I did it for about a month a year ago from June to July. And there's some spikes there. The the spikes, I'm talking about impressions now, but the spikes get up to about 3,000 in terms of impressions. I did a couple of posts November, December, only small spikes, maybe 1,000, 2,000. But then since March 21st, so there's actually nearly three months I've been posting, we have some much bigger spikes. And yesterday was actually the biggest spike of all. We got to 9,000 impressions in one day. And I'll explain exactly how we did that later on in this episode. Now, before we actually jump into this, I want to explain that I'm not, there are definitely other people out there that are killing it on LinkedIn. My posts get on average like three, two, 3,000 impressions and maybe like 10 to 30 likes and 10 to 30 comments. So not like absolutely killing it, but I have learned a lot through this process and I think it is having a good impact on the business. So let's jump into the theory. So what we're really trying to understand here is how can we invest minimal time and they get maximum attention. And so the way we do that is we actually work with the social platforms. We understand what their incentives are, and then we work with them to almost collaborate, although obviously it's just code that, or an algorithm we're working with, but we're collaborating with the algorithm for the algorithm to give you more impressions to the people that would potentially buy for you. And so what we're doing here is we need to understand, let's take LinkedIn, for example. Now, LinkedIn get paid if people, more people spend more time and attention on their site. And so if you can help LinkedIn do that, LinkedIn are going to reward you with more attention. And so what we essentially need to do is put our best information, the most attention grabbing information into the platform without even considering linking out, because obviously LinkedIn are not going to want you to link out because they don't get paid if you link out. So we just want to put our best thoughts, our best wisdom, our best content into the platform itself, optimize over time so we understand what gets more attention and do more of that. And if we do that, then the LinkedIn algorithm or any algorithm on any social profile is going to reward us with more attention. And what happens when LinkedIn is giving our ideal customers more attention is that if that content is somehow related to or educates about the problems that our service or product solves, then that's going to be good for our business in the long term. The absolute ideal kind of signal that your content is working that is actually very hard to track is if somebody who would be your potential buyer or is an influencer in your buying process takes your social content from any platform, either takes a screenshot or copies the link from a LinkedIn post and then pastes that into their Slack channel. And there's absolutely no way you can track this apart from maybe asking or discussing with your customers about how they found you. That's really the holy grail here. And it's an immensely valuable action that anyone can take for your business. And the only way we're going to do that is if more people see our content and if our content is actually helping them solve the problem that they are trying to achieve. So we want a balance between the content that gets attention and the content that somehow raises awareness about the problem that our product or services solve. Because we can have a shed load of impressions, but if the content is completely irrelevant, if it's a picture of your dog, then it's not really going to get us anywhere. But at the same time, if we have content that's super detailed and just 
highly technical about the problem that your business solves and it's not going to get impressions, then again, it's not as useful. So we need to walk the line between content that gets engagement and impressions and then content that educates about the problem that our business solves. So it actually becomes valuable in our four buyers in the buying process. But the headline here is essentially what we're going to do is take the wisdom that you're generating. You're running a B2B company. You are generating wisdom. You're either running or you're in the marketing team. You are generating wisdom. We're going to take that and without a thought for linking out, without a thought for your Google Analytics traffic stats, we're going to pump that into the most relevant social platform natively. We're not linking out to get engagement, to get impressions and ideally influence people into our buying cycle. So that's the theory and how we're going to do this. Now I want to just cover a few mindsets because the only way this is actually going to work if you're consistent over really three to six months, that's when you'll start to see results. And so there's four little mindsets I want to share with you. The first is no one cares. You think that you write out this beautiful social post. Oh my God, what are my friends going to think? Oh my God, what are my clients going to think? Oh my God, what is my LinkedIn network going to think? No one cares. Most people won't even see the post. And if they do see the post, then most people won't read it. And so you really just have to understand that no one really cares. And this is completely liberating because it enables you to then freely post without being too concerned that people are going to hate you. The next one is focusing on learning. So what's super interesting for me is that I'll, I write up this post, we'll go into the process shortly, but I have absolutely no idea which posts are going to perform or not. I'll be about to post something and I'll be like, oh my God, this is completely ridiculous. This is never going to work. And it will be the best performing post of the next month. So we just have to focus on learning. We just have to, have to try stuff, understand what works and what doesn't. And then when it does, do more of that. Next up is releasing control of attribution. As I mentioned, we're not going to link back to the site for you to get your custom conversions or for you, for you to get your direct demo requests. We're not going to use UTM tracking links. We're just going to believe that if we get attention and add value to somebody who's in our buying process, that ultimately that's going to come back to us through word of mouth or through them actually coming to buy our service. And that connects with the final mindset, which is just focus on giving away your best stuff. You may think that your competitors are going to read this, maybe they will, but really the information is no longer the advantage. Your ability to innovate and your ability to execute are the advantages. So don't worry, give away your best stuff, give away absolutely everything. It will be worth it in the end. All right, next up, before we actually talk about starting posting the content, we need to ensure that your profile is optimized. Your profile, you can kind of think of it like another web page. And so we want to ensure that it is attractive. If we do get people coming to your profile, we want to make sure it's attractive to them as possible. So first of all, clear tagline, just explain what you do. Don't say that you do seven different things. I simply say, a give famous tagline, which is we start growing the most profitable podcast. And then I say B2B marketer and founder, because that's essentially what I do. We need to then have a clear profile picture and then a cover image, probably related to your business. If you go to LinkedIn, search Tom Hunt, you'll see ours. It's a kind of a social proof image. It says the secret team behind podcast growth at, and then there's images of 12 of our clients. So we need clear tagline, clear profile picture, and ideally a cover image associated with your brand. Next, we want to, there's a featured post section on your profile and we want to put stuff in there, which is almost like the next step for a potential buyer down the buying journey. So it could be free content or it could be an opt-in. Right now we have a free podcast course where we share a case study of how we grew a client show from like zero to 140 downloads a month. So it's an opt-in, it links directly to the opt-in page, but you could put a podcast that works well, or you could put some other free content that moves people down the funnel. I wouldn't recommend putting like a direct CTA for someone to buy there. I think it's too early. You wanna just move people slowly down that funnel. If you have a creative profile and it's really easy to switch to a creative profile, just Google LinkedIn creative profile and you'll be able to do that. You can now add a website just below your tagline. And so here's another great opportunity to present content that will move people down the funnel. So right now I have the link to this podcast there because it's a nice transition for a B2B marketer to go from, okay, who's this guy? I like this LinkedIn post. I want to get more of his thoughts, sign up to the podcast and then ideally we'll listen to a load of episodes. So it's almost similar to the feature post. I have in that link, I have the podcast and in the feature post, I have the opt-in for that podcast course. It could be, you could change it, but I think either free or opt-in content are the best CTAs there. All right, next up, we're actually going to talk about how you create this content. And this is highly skewed towards LinkedIn because that's where I'm posting. That's what I know the most about. So the first thing we need to do is get the niche right. We need to understand what is the topic or topics that you can cover we, and here we need to look at the intersection of what you're excited and passionate about, because if you're not, then you're never going to write this every weekend, which is where I recommend you do it. And also what you know about. What realistically do you have more knowledge than the average person or more knowledge than intermediate person in? So your posts and the information you produce are actually going to add value. Now, if you're not interested in or have knowledge about topics that 
are related to your business, then maybe I wouldn't even do this. So there's actually three things we need to get the intersection of is what you're interested in, what you can add value on, and what is related, somehow related to your business. Ideally, we want to be talking about problems that can be solved by your solution. So we want to educate people about a better way to do things. And as people go on the journey to achieving that thing, your product or service is the thing that they can pay to get there faster or more effectively. And so for me, I mainly slant my posts around B2B marketing, because if I can educate about B2B marketing, then a natural solution may be for a potential buyer to start a B2B podcast. But I do also talk about other stuff like related to entrepreneurship, because our ideal customers are either B2B marketers in larger organizations, or if the business is smaller than it is the CEO or founder or entrepreneur. So both of those topics do relate to the person that could potentially buy our products and services. The B2B marketing topic is a little bit better because it educates about the problems that our service solves. So first we need to get the niche right. Then we need to ideally set a time where we can bulk right. If you set this up for you to do first thing every morning and you have to go through the painful process of writing, it's relatively unlikely, I think, that you're actually going to be able to do this every day. And so what I like to do, especially on weekends uh, when I'm free, is I just get up, have some black coffee, and I just open a Google Doc, which I have all the social posts I've ever written for LinkedIn in, and then I just start writing. Now, if I have ideas throughout the week for a post, I'll put them into that doc so I can get started faster, but I just start writing. And how I find ideas for posts is I go through a few different options. A, I'm like consuming content from other people in the niche pretty much throughout the week, either in podcasts or on LinkedIn. We'll get more into that in a second. Or I'm thinking about the interesting insights we've had within our company or the interesting results we've had within our company. And then I just try and write posts around them. An easy way to do it is just write out like the insights that you want and then add an intro and an outro after you've done that. And so I like to do this, ideally get five posts written. And I've even been posting Monday to Friday once a day or seven days a week once a day. It depends if I have enough posts. But I ideally want to get five written in that one session. Sometimes that's a bit of a stretch. So sometimes I do two sessions. But typically it may take like an hour depending on how inspired I am, to do five or maybe two hours to do five. Some posts are like 300 words, some posts are like one sentence. So I just keep them in the Google Doc and then every morning, typically around 7 to 8 a.m., I post. And so I'm just copying from the Google Doc and I'm posting, I actually post into our Facebook group, which is called SaaS Marketer, onto my Twitter profile and also onto LinkedIn. But LinkedIn is like the core focus, so the content is optimized for LinkedIn. And so that goes out first thing in the morning. If I get comments early on, then I'm replying to every comment. I'm checking in throughout the day to reply to comments because the more comments we get, the more replies we get, the more the content gets shown in other people's feed. Essentially, if somebody likes or comments your post, there is a chance that LinkedIn will then show that to their connections. And that's how you get more impressions. So what are we actually going to be writing in this content? So there's a few different ways to do it. There are a few tactics that will get you more attention. So you can challenge common beliefs. You can be controversial. This is it requires some kind of advanced knowledge of the topic, but that definitely works. You can be vulnerable. I'm not good at this. I'm not talking about how I'm feeling. <laughs> so, but being vulnerable definitely does work. You can tell stories. And one thing I will share about this, actually, if you feel uncomfortable about posting something, this means that you should post it. As long as we're not being nasty, we're not offending anyone. But the more uncomfortable you are, typically the better the content will perform. Now, we're not putting any links or posts. We're not putting any links in the post. And we can embed videos and we can embed images, but not linking out. They have to be natively uploaded into the platform. We need to ensure our formatting is perfect. I use a lot of emojis, but that's just my style. You'll develop your writing style over time, but I use a lot of emojis just because I like to. I've been testing with and without hashtags. It doesn't seem to be a massive difference as to how many impressions you get, but I would kind of test that and see if it's working. I like to put the hashtags like natively into the post. So if I'm saying, today we learned a lot about marketing, then I would put the hashtag in front of marketing. Now, my most successful post of all time was yesterday. and I'm just going to get the stats up because we basically nearly broke the 10K impressions in a day barrier. The post has about 10K impressions, but now that's over a couple of days. But we got to 9,406 impressions, which is the record. The previous biggest one was about 5,000 impressions. And what did I do here? I picked a fight. There's a big kind of movement about the difference. I'm getting into the technicals of B2B marketing now, but there's a big movement towards capturing, you no, know, creating demand versus capturing demand. I won't get into the technical thing. So there's a quote from a famous person in space that says, the businesses that create demand will win. And so I just kind of call bullshit on this because fame, we haven't spent any dollars on creating demand and we reach 1 million AR. And so the argument is a bit more nuanced, really that 
if you're earlier on in your business and you're bootstrapped, then it, you're put kind of good just to capture demand because you don't have the resources to create demand. And so it's a bit more nuanced, but that, my post was just like a strong opinion against that. And this just got a lot of impressions because people were yeah, like basically coming back at me to explain that I was actually wrong. Now, here's a super interesting concept in that the more controversial you are, the more impressions you get. And it doesn't really matter if you're right or wrong, if you're getting the attention. And here's like the Donald Trump strategy and the Elon Musk strategy. And so it's a little bit dangerous. I, you don't want to offend anyone. And I didn't offend anyone in that post. I was just had a strong opinion. And so, but that's just something that, that works. So if you can have a strong opinion, if you can call bullshit on a trend that you, that you think is wrong, then this will definitely get you more attention. Now, one other thing to add is when you, when it's relevant do tag people or tag businesses, obviously you're not like pitching, but I tag fame when I talk about fame in a post and I'll tag people if I'm talking about people in a post or I tag their business because the more people you tag, they will definitely look at the post. So that's an impression there, but then also they ideally will comment, like, and maybe even share. Now, the other kind of advantage, apart from obviously growing your business for LinkedIn posting, the more I find the best way to learn is to teach. And so the more you teach something, the better you're going to get at it. And the insights will just stack on top of each other. And so you're going to be creating all this content. You're going to be learning all this stuff. And this is going to help you with the rest of your content machine. For example, all the work that I've been doing creating content on LinkedIn is helping me make this podcast episode a bit better because I've been learning about it, right? And maybe you'll take an insight from a blog post and then you'll just take one point from that and you'll put it into a LinkedIn post. So everything will like feed together. Maybe someone else will comment on one of your LinkedIn posts and you'll be like, okay, that'll be a great idea for a podcast episode or a blog post. And then if you're a guest on another podcast, you'll then create a couple of LinkedIn posts from that, if you see what I'm saying. So it integrates very nicely into the rest of the content, SEO, social flywheel. But the real big insight is that the more content you create, the more you're going to learn, the better you're going to become at your business. So more like final tips here. Choose your platform. Focus on it for three months. Ideally, posting at a cadence you can maintain quality for. Now, that ideally would be five times a week, so Monday to Friday. See how it goes, but just ideally agree to execute for three months. You'll get some posts that will get very little traction. You'll get some posts that will get more. And then learn about that. Review the stats in LinkedIn and try to create more of the stuff that is working. And ideally, you'll get a graph that's sloping up in terms of impressions over time. And the way we're going to actually judge this for you is obviously we're going to have the quantitative data from LinkedIn engagement and impressions. If that is going up, that means more people are enjoying your content and getting value from your content. And then ideally we want to get qualitative feedback. So these are comments or DMs or people mentioning in sales calls that they like your post on LinkedIn. For example, I have clients that are like in our client meetings. They're like, Tom, I like your post on LinkedIn. They ask me about stuff. I've had DMs from people saying they like my comments. We've had comments from people saying, that they like the LinkedIn posts. And so that is a, like, I can basically tell that the quality of metrics are going up, obviously in LinkedIn, but then also the quantity of metrics improving as well. I also know from when I was posting last year that we actually got a deal because super interestingly, someone who was reading my posts got asked by a potential client if they knew anybody in the podcasting world. And he, the person who saw my posts, recommended us primarily because they saw the posts. And then they became a client. They're still a client today. And we actually do about three podcasts for them. So I know they can lead to clients. And a kind of interesting mindset here is that we're not just writing for the people that could buy our product. If we build trust and authority in the eyes of somebody who's not our ideal buyer, but is connected to and could be a word of mouth spreader, then that's also going to help us as well. Now, the final thing I didn't mention is that one other thing I want you to do is to go to find five to 10 people in your niche that are posting regularly on LinkedIn that basically would have a similar target customer to you. So we have a B2B podcast agency. If somebody has like a demand generation agency and they're the CEO of it and they're posting regularly about LinkedIn or on LinkedIn about demand generation, then that would be one of the people that I would follow. And so what you then do is you go to their profile and then you go to their, if you scroll down on their profile, you'll see an option to show all activity. And then from there, you can click on posts. And what, so the URL structure is linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash their profile name four slash recent dash activity, four slash shares. That's the URL you want to be on there. You bookmark that, put it into a bookmark folder with their name. And so then what you do after you do your post every morning is you go through that list and you just make intelligent, interesting comments on maybe three to five a day. It should take you like 20 minutes. And if you do that, your profile is going to get more impressions because you're basically showing up more on LinkedIn. You're going to build relationships with these people they'll start posting on your as well. And you'll basically build this little 
kind of ring of uh, commenting friends. So I have about 20 now in that list because I add a couple every day. Whenever I see someone who's relevant or interesting, I, I add them in. And I just go through and I comment on maybe three to five a day. And so I'm building relationships with other influencers, which is useful. And I'm getting more attention because my comments are going to be read by ideally potential customers. And then also I'm getting more engagement, likes and comments on my posts because these people are coming over and commenting like almost like in reciprocity to my comments on theirs. So I hope this has been useful. We'll do another check-in maybe in a month or two about how this is going. I'll update you on the numbers, update you on the ROI. But so far, it seems to be looking good. I'm enjoying it. I'm learning. The numbers are going up and I'm getting quality feedback. So I'm quite happy with it. Any questions, just ping me on LinkedIn or ping me an email at tom at fame.so. I want to thank you so much for listening. <laughs>